man, it's absolutely crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I, I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to feel. I am a mixed bag of emotions. I'm a mixed bag of emotions following the Royal Rumble. And I honestly can't come up. I can't think of another pay-per-view that was this emotional with so many different feelings at the end of it all. I mean, this pay-per-view literally made you feel everything. Everything. Every possible human emotion was felt during this pay-per-view. You loved it. You hated it. You were disgusted by it. You just wanted to throw your hands up and just say, I give up. You were excited. Tears of joy. I'm sure were flowing down people's faces tonight with the return of Edge. You were fearful. You were confused. You were scared shitless when Roman Reigns was the last guy again. How many years in a row is it now that he lasted till the end? Always finds himself to have a late number in these things. Always seems to find himself as the last one being eliminated in these things. Nervousness that he was going to win the Royal Rumble again. Every single possible human emotion went into this pay-per-view. Now, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing to some of you. But I'm going to sit here and tell you that I think all of the mixed bag of emotions that went into this show made for a very enjoyable Royal Rumble. That's all I could say. They did some things right. They did other things incredibly wrong, which we will go over. But at the end of it all, every single year we wait we wait and we are just expecting disappointment with the Royal Rumble. I can honestly say for the first time in a long time, as far as a complete show, WWE gave us a really, really, really good Royal Rumble show. There's no possible way I could give this show a thumbs down. There's no possible way I could give this show a thumbs down. There was something on this show that you definitely liked. Definitely liked. Now, as far as what the company is going to do going into WrestleMania, I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm very nervous about what they're doing going into WrestleMania. I'm very nervous on the women's front because WWE seems to be very, I would say, ignorant in their decision to give Charlotte Flair the Royal Rumble. I think WWE gave the fans what we wanted Last year with Becky Lynch. And I think Vince McMahon held on as long as he could to give the fans what we wanted in Becky Lynch. And with him giving us what we wanted coming out of last year's WrestleMania, now it's time for Vince McMahon to get what he wants. And that's why Charlotte Flair won the Women's Royal Rumble. It's not a good decision at all. I think it was one of the worst parts of the entire evening, if not the worst part of the entire evening. Probably one of the biggest creative blunders that the company has made in a very long time. And I don't think anybody in that arena and anybody watching at home is happy with the decision that Charlotte Flair won the Royal Rumble. Then we got Drew McIntyre. Again, like I said, a mixed bag of emotions with Drew McIntyre. In that Royal Rumble. A mixed bag of emotions in general with the men's Royal Rumble because up until Drew McIntyre came out, this was nothing more than a complete burial of the main roster by the hands of Brock Lesnar. And I didn't know what WWE was doing. I even tweeted out during the show, someone has to be the the recipient of this thing. Who is going to be the benefactor of Brock Lesnar burying... All of the main roster in this Royal Rumble. Out came Drew McIntyre and within one Claymore kick. That's all it took. Mixed with a low blow from Ricochet, of course. But one Claymore kick sent Brock Lesnar and his 13 eliminations over the top rope. And at the end of that, my feelings 
of negativity towards the Royal Rumble actually swung in the other direction. It actually ended up being a very good Royal Rumble at the end of it all. The Royal Rumble 2020 was a thumbs up show. It was a huge bag of mixed emotions, but that's why we love pro wrestling. That's why we all sit here and talk about pro wrestling. That's why you guys are listening to me talk about pro wrestling. That's why we tune into pro wrestling every single week. We love the emotion. There's no better sport in the world that's going to elicit a reaction out of you than pro wrestling. That's what WWE did tonight. They played on every single human emotion that a human being could possibly have. And it turned turned into what I thought was a very good Royal Rumble show. Thank you guys so much for joining me here on the podcast, man. We're going to go over everything, man. I got notes. I got notes. I got notes. Extensive notes on this four-hour show. Four-hour Royal Rumble show from Houston. And thank you guys so much for joining me here on my review of the 2020 Royal Rumble. I am JD. Make sure you guys follow me on social media. I appreciate all the interaction on social media, man. We blew it up as always during these main roster pay-per-views, especially during an event like the Royal Rumble at JD from NY206. Thank you to all the new followers on Twitter. Thank you to all the new followers on Instagram. Follow me on social media if you can. If you're new around here and you enjoy what you hear, you enjoy what you see, make sure to hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button down below. I would greatly appreciate it. If you guys missed my flagship podcast this weekend, Off the Script, episode 310. We uploaded Friday and Saturday. Make sure you guys go and check all of that out. Plus everything else that you might have missed on the channel in the week. Everything you need will be linked down below in the description of this very video. And I want to thank everybody that came out and hung out with me during my live Royal Rumble preview and predictions on Sunday afternoon before we hit the pre-show on Royal Rumble Sunday. Thank you to all you that super chatted and hung out with me. You guys were awesome. We had almost 2,000 live viewers during the one-hour live stream earlier. So thank you guys so very much. And as always, make sure you guys check out my sponsor for the show, Audible. Audible is sponsoring the show tonight, audibletrial.com slash off the script. You guys can support Audible and support the show by signing up. Audibletrial.com slash off the script. One free audiobook and 30 days of their service. Absolutely free, man. Check that out. It's a great way to support off the scripts. Let's get into the review, man. I got a lot to say in regards to the Royal Rumble tonight. Chad Gable versus Sheamus was the opening match, and this was on the pre show. I said it before, I do not think that this really should have been on the Royal Rumble event, but they put it on the Royal Rumble event anyway. This could have easily been saved for SmackDown on Fox. Don't know why they didn't go that route, but I guess they wanted to get Sheamus on pay-per-view, and hey, Chad Gable got a pay-per-view payday out of it, so good for him. This was a very predictable match. I think everybody going into this realized that Sheamus was going to win, and I don't think anybody really had a problem with that, but Sheamus wins here in his opening match or in the opening match of the Royal Rumble, in his first match back in the WWE after a short layoff. He got himself right. He looks great. And I'm happy that Sheamus is back. Chad Gable looked absolutely ridiculous tonight. But but I'm wondering with his choice of color in his ring attire, he had black, he had gold, and he had purple. I wonder if he was honoring Colby Bryant with the colors of choice tonight for his in-ring gear. I'm not sure about that. But it'll be interesting to find out if that was actually the case tonight with Kobe Bryant, unfortunately, passing away earlier today. I know it was a huge story going around. Everybody's heartbroken over it. I wonder if he actually had the choice of colors in his ring gear, ring gear for Kobe Bryant. First big spot of the match with Gable doing a crossbody block, taking both him and Sheamus over the top. Gable using his speed to gain the advantage on Sheamus. Sheamus, though, sent Gable into the steel post and started working on Gable's shoulder. He executed an old-school shoulder breaker, and you never see that. I don't I don't remember the last time I seen a shoulder breaker like the one Sheamus did in this match, man. Fucking beautiful. Absolutely beautiful shoulder breaker. Old-school move, like I said, that I have not seen in a very long time. Sheamus remained in control, working on Gable's limbs, hands, fingers. It was almost very Pete Dunn-esque. With the joint manipulation, 
Gable looked to be bleeding from the left ear. I don't know what happened there, but the referee put the, put the gloves on and Gable was bleeding from his left ear. Gable tried to fight back by stomping on Sheamus' boots. Sheamus threw him to the outside. Gable jumped on the apron into Sheamus, clubbing him at least 20 times in the chest with some forearms. Sheamus yelling at Gable, you're a runt. You don't belong in the ring. You're a disease. So that's what he was yelling at Chad Gable. Poor Chad Gable. Drop kick to the knee by Gable to Sheamus. Gable fighting back, rolling, uh, rolling kick to Sheamus there. And Gable on Sheamus' ankle trying to take the bro kick away from him. So he's actually working on Sheamus' ankle, looking towards the match and seeing where this match was headed. He tried to take the bro kick away from Sheamus. So that was a pretty good strategy there by Chad Gable. Gable went up to the top for a moonsault. Sheamus caught him. Gable with a DDT. Gable up top again. Hits the moonsault for a two count. Chaos Theory by Sheamus, which looked great for a two count there. Sheamus went up top for a clothesline. Gable counted that into an ankle lock. Sheamus got up. Sheamus went for a bro kick. Back to the ankle lock for Gable. Sheamus gets to the ropes. Both men back up. Gable with a crucifix bomb for a close two count. Sheamus up again. Instant bro kick right to the face. Same thing that happened on SmackDown. And Sheamus wins one, two, three with the bro kick. So that was that. It was a good match. Sheamus beats Gable. Hard fought. Outcome. We pretty much expected it to be Sheamus winning, but it was a hard fought match and Sheamus looks to be, you know, I think Sheamus is going to be one of those guys on SmackDown that they're really going to push. I think Sheamus is going to be looked at as a, as a really big deal on SmackDown. I predicted that when Braun Strowman inevitably gets his championship match against Shinsuke Nakamura, that he's going to take the title off of Shinsuke Nakamura. And I think Sheamus and Braun Strowman are going to have a collision course for the Intercontinental Championship. Coincidentally, that's the only title that Sheamus has not held. So I think that Sheamus and Strowman is a solid prediction for WrestleMania season for the Intercontinental Championship. That is, if Braun Strowman could win the Intercontinental Championship, because you know how he does faring against major championships. He usually ends up like a loser. Braun Strowman. Good match, predictable outcome. Humberto Carrillo versus Andrade for the United States Championship. I was surprised that this was actually in the pre-show. I thought they would definitely do this on the main show, but seeing how long the main show went... And it was almost a perfect timed pre uh, main show. This being on the pre-show, I did not mind at the end of the evening. So Humberto is back. U.S. title match against Andrade. You would think, you would think if you're Humberto Carrillo and Andrade tried to end your career with a hammerlock DDT on exposed concrete, that you'd start the match off with a little bit of intensity. We got arm drags and Humberto bouncing off the ropes in the first minute or two of this match. You know, it should have been a fist fight. It should have been a brawl. Scott tried to end your fucking career. And you're doing flippy moves and arm drags and this and that. You know, when someone wants to end my career and drop my head on concrete, the first thing in my mind is not a fucking arm drag. Just throwing that out there. Andrade slowed the pace down, grounding Huberto with an arm bar. Humberto tried to come back with an arm drag. Everything with this guy is an arm drag. Nothing about Humberto's offense is impactful. I don't know how you guys feel about Humberto. The guy's talented as all hell. Believe me, he's talented as all hell, but his offense is just weak. I don't buy into his offense. And I honestly think a lot of people feel the same way as I do. So Humberto tried to come back with an arm drag. Andrade hit him with a stiff back elbow. Humberto tried to come back with his signature high-flying arm drag off the ropes, and Andrade slammed him face first into the mat. So Andrade had that one well scouted. Back to the submissions for Andrade. Andrade went for the three amigos and Humberto stopped that one quick. Andrade blocked the crossbody, went for his running knees, and Andrade didn't get them. Instead, Carrillo was on the outside. Andrade went for a basement drop kick. He slid underneath the rope. Carrillo with a springboard moonsault to the outside takes Andrade out as they both go into the barricade. Back in the ring, Andrade with the three amigos, but Carrillo countered the third one. Up top, beautiful moonsault by Humberto Carrillo. Andrade tried to get the feet up. Carrillo goes into the turnbuckle. Andrade got the running knees. One for a cover. Only a two count for Andrade. Hammerlock DDT attempt by Andrade. Carrillo reversed it into a small package. Both now in a standing position, trading shots. 
Carrillo with a super kick to drop Andrade. Goes for a cover and a two count for Carrillo. Both men up again, slugging it out in the middle of the ring. Andrade missed that huge back elbow of his. Carrillo rocked Andrade with a back elbow. Both men up top. Uh, top rope, Hurricanrana by Humberto, which looked absolutely incredible. Cover for a two count. Andrade with the jawbreaker. Carrillo tried to fight back. Another Hurricanrana, and Andrade counted that into a pinfall and gets the quick roll-up win. That was it. So Andrade beats Humberto, and I don't know why anybody is going to care about Humberto Carrillo. Every single time Humberto Carrillo is in a match, especially for a title, every big-time match that Humberto Carrillo is in, the guy ends up losing. Now, with the amount of times that this guy has been given opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, and he loses, why should I or you care about Humberto Carrillo? At this point, I don't think anybody will ever buy into Humberto Carrillo. This is the product of WWE not knowing what to do with new talent. They brought this guy over from 205 Live. They put him on Monday Night Raw expecting him to be over because he's a fucking cute little baby face with big dimples, right? He's a good looking guy. He's high flying. His offense is going to get him over. And on top of that, he had some small chance of surviving on the main roster. WWE clearly didn't give him much room to work with because every single time out, this guy has lost, 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 lost. To AJ, it was a loss. To the OC, it was a loss. To Andrade, it was loss after loss after loss. Why would anybody buy into this guy? Why do you, after tonight, look at Humberto Carrillo as anything more than a loser? The guy is dead. It's over. This guy's not getting any more title shots. They need to move on from Andrade. And Andrade needs to be in a program with the U.S. title on the line against guys like Ricochet, Alistair Black, guys like that. Humberto Carrillo's time for the United States Championship is over. It's time to move on. But this is WWE's fault. And they sank Andrade, or they sank uh, Humberto, rather, before this guy could even fucking breathe. That's my take on that. Good match, but nobody's ever going to buy into Humberto Carrillo after tonight. We hit the main show. Baron Corbin, or King Corbin, versus Roman Reigns. This was a false count anywhere match in Minute Maid Park. Now, the false count anywhere stipulation was only made because there's no reason to give a shit about this match at all if it was a standard one-on-one match. So they made the false count anywhere match to give you at least some small piece of interest in what these guys were doing. Corbin came to the ring with his goons. He was being carried to the ring, and Roman didn't want to wait for him to get to the ring, so he charged at Corbin. Security uh, and whatever the fuck you want to call them, They were all beaten down by Roman Reigns. And at the start of the match, they started the match on the outside. Got some minor brawling on the outside. Nothing too crazy. Reigns goes for the first pinfall of the match off a suplex and a two count. Reigns goes for a Superman punch. Corbin moved. Deep six for a near fall early in the match for a two count. Back outside, Corbin throws Reigns into the barricade. Corbin then, with the steel steps, picks them up and throws them into Reigns' shoulder. Corbin now clearing off the Spanish announce table. Reigns evades a table attack. Both men now in the crowd amongst the fans at Minute Maid Park. Nothing really major happened until back at ringside, Corbin takes the ring bell to Reigns' midsection. Choke slam on the German announce table, and Corbin got a very close near fall on the floor. False count anywhere. Both men slugging it out of ringside. Now Reigns for Superman punch. Corbin catches him, choke slams him through the Spanish announce table. For another close near fall, Corbin then dragged Reigns right back into the crowd. Corbin slams him into some production crates. Very slow and very boring, I would say. Nothing of interest here. Brawling into the crowd. This is why they added the false count anywhere stipulation to give you guys some sense of excitement. Meanwhile, we see a whole glimpse of Minute Maid Park. And I got to admit, the way WWE set up Minute Maid Park... And the lights and the setup and everything, it looked great. I love, and I know I'm not the only one in the community who, who thinks this, but I'm loving the baseball stadiums for the Royal Rumble. I think this is going to be their new thing. And I love it. I love the dugouts. I love the feel. It, it just looks great as far as the setup goes. 
So I'm loving what they're doing with these baseball stadiums every January, man. I hope, I hope it continues for the WWE. And we got some really nice shots of Minute Maid Park and how, how it made the Royal Rumble look and feel in this match. It was really nicely done. So all of a sudden, Reigns with a retaliation Samoan drop on Corbin through a table in the crowd. You know where all the other announcers are, the Japanese and the Chinese and the Hindu Hindu or the Indian announcers, whatever the fuck they got going on over there. So we see their setup get destroyed. Reigns, I don't know who, who got blasted here or what table got blasted, but Reigns with the retaliation Samoan drop on Corbin through an announce table. I think it was the Japanese announce table. They go deeper into the crowd. Another Samoan drop through another announce table. I don't know who got taken out at that point. So Corbin drives Reigns into some more crates after the Samoan drops. Corbin, uh, Corbin crawls into the production technical area. So they're going up a flight of steps. You see a bunch of monitors and computers and wires and all this tech shit. So I don't know where. Ziggler and Rude come to save Corbin. So it's a three-on-one advantage here. The Usos come to Roman's aid. So it's even up now. Everybody starts brawling in the production area. Ziggler and Rude completely take out the Usos. Trash cans across Jimmy Uso's back. Jay Uso, you remember the production area where they were just on? He dove off the production area down below where, where everybody was and did a flying cross body block on top of Rude and Ziggler. Some Jeff Hardy-like shit from Jay Uso. That looked incredible. Corbin comes over and slams Jay on top of a steel barricade that Bobby Roode had laid on top of some crates. Roman and Corbin then brawl back towards the ring. But along the way, Reigns stopped at some porta potties. So this was pretty much, uh, this was WWE's way of symbolism. To tell everybody indiscreetly what they think of this feud. It's shit. It's garbage. So with the porta potties, he locked Corbin in one of the porta potties. He rolls it for a little bit and then he flips it over with Corbin inside. So now, literally, the king can sit on his throne because this feud is fucking bullshit. So there was actually a holy shit chant that broke out when Corbin was flipped over into the porta potty. I found that to be comical, literally. So brawling all over the place, Corbin at one point was hanging over the actual Astros dugout. Now, this was tarped off with some black tarp. He was pulling off the black tarp. He's seen right into the dugout, which was pretty cool. And Corbin has a steel chair at this point. He slams it across Reigns' back. And we get this great aerial shot of Minute Maid Park with the dugout and both of these guys brawling on the dugout, man. I hate this fucking feud with a passion. But the aerial shot of them brawling on the dugout was fucking phenomenal. I gotta admit, I loved that shot. And one of the reasons why I love the baseball field setups for an event like this. I just think it's awesome. So they got a great aerial shot of Corbin Reigns from the sky cam at this point, standing on top of the dugout brawling. So after this, the match was soon over. Superman punch on top of the dugout. A god-awful spear by Roman Reigns here on the top of the dugout. And Reigns went for the pin. False count anywhere. He pins King Corbin after a spear on top of the Astros dugout. And that was it. This was a fun match. Some nice camera shots by <laughs> Kevin Dunn, right? But in the end, the feud sucks. This feud needs to die in a fire. This feud needs to die a thousand deaths. But in the end, these guys produced a very unmemorable yet fun Falls Count Anywhere match. It's the most I could say about it. Is this over? Not by a long shot. This is WWE. Reigns didn't win the Royal Rumble. Baron Corbin didn't win the Royal Rumble. Reigns and Corbin didn't even meet in the Royal Rumble. After words were thrown at each other that they were going to eliminate each other in the Royal Rumble. They weren't even in the Royal Rumble at the same time. This feud is not over by a long shot. And that pisses me off. Because I don't know who is interested in seeing this feud continue on for another few weeks. But they have nothing else to do on SmackDown. Now you got the Usos involved, you got Ziggler and Rude, I'm sure we'll get a tag team match on SmackDown with those four guys. So this is not over. It's not over. We got to bear through this garbage for another couple of weeks as we head on into Saudi Arabia. So we'll see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen with these guys, but 
We'll see what happens going into WrestleMania. Uh, we have, I believe, one more shot for Reigns to get into WrestleMania, and that is at the Elimination Chamber. With Drew McIntyre winning the Royal Rumble tonight, that means that SmackDown is going to get the Elimination Chamber in March. So that's probably Roman Reigns' way in to WrestleMania and The Fiend. Up until then, he's got nothing else to do. So they're probably going to keep him with Baron Corbin. Shoot me. Shoot me. So we went from that to the Women's Royal Rumble match. The first Royal Rumble match of the evening. And I was excited because I love the Royal Rumble. I love the crowd. I love the anticipation. I love the unpredictability. I love watching a new superstar blossom and get an opportunity to shine in these types of matches. And I was hoping that WWE would get it right. This women's Royal Rumble match was fucking great up until fucking Santina Morella came out. And then after that, this match died. They they brought everybody to such fucking excitement with this Royal Rumble, with what happened in this match up until that point. And then it fell off a fucking cliff. It fell off a goddamn cliff. And I don't know if I can recall another match in WWE history where we were all so into it and then everybody was just taken out of it like that. Everybody's excitement was literally slaughtered at the end of this match. This could have been the best women's Royal Rumble match since they gave the women the Royal Rumble. I was going to say this was the easily, easily the best women's Royal Rumble match to date. And I can honestly say at the end of it, this might have been the worst women's Royal Rumble match to date. Awful. Absolutely awful. Alexa Bliss draws number one in the Royal Rumble. I was shocked. I even put in my notes, and I will say this quote, uh, word for word. This is what I say, and I quote, I will look back at this, this piece of writing here at the end. Writing this now. And I ask myself, she's going to be the Iron Woman in this thing, isn't she? That's the only reason why I would assume WWE had Alexa Bliss come out at number one. There was no other reason for me to even think about Alexa Bliss drawing number one. She's going to be the Iron Woman, isn't she? So we'll cycle back to that in just a little bit. Bianca Belair draws number two from NXT, and I'm excited because I love Bianca. Molly Holly drew number three, or Mighty Molly draws number three. She looked good. She looked good. She was just another warm body in this thing, in the field of 30, but she looked good. Nice cross body off the top onto Belair and Bliss early on. Nikki Cross came out at number four. Now Alexa Bliss has backup. They hugged exactly like the best friends would in AEW, Chucky e. T and Trent, except we didn't get the, the epic Okada zoom out on the camera. But they hugged anyway. Best friends in WWE, played by Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Mini me. Have you guys ever looked at Nikki Cross and see how WWE just absolutely killed all intrigue for Nikki Cross? They took her character and completely butchered it. Now she has no personality whatsoever. She's just a mini-me version of Alexa Bliss. She has no identity. This is WWE. Call someone up who has identity, put them on the main roster, kill them, and give them no identity. Now she's just another Alexa Bliss. Sorry if I don't care about Nikki Cross now. So Nikki Cross is out at number four. Lana... Comes out at number five. She said something on the microphone. I didn't really pay much attention because Lana sucks. But uh, I did see a sign that was in the crowd on the aisleway. When Lana was walking out, there was a sign behind her that said, and I quote, Lana cheats more than the Astros, end quote. That was probably the better or the best thing about Lana's entrance. This was better than her actual participation in the Royal Rumble match. Lana actually botched on the microphone and said that she was not a WWE superstar, but she was a WW superstar. I don't know what the fuck that means, but uh, get the microphone away from this woman, ASAP. I don't know why they continue to give her microphone time. She is fucking awful. Awful. She talked all the way to the ring and said nothing of importance. I didn't even copy down what she said. Mercedes Martinez comes out. At number six, she came in, started to throw everybody around. She just got signed to the WWE. So this is, uh, 
You know, this is something that she wanted for herself. It was a dream of her to work for the WWE. She's been in the WWE for a little bit. She was in both May Young Classics. And now she's in the Royal Rumble. She's living out her dreams. And it's good to see. She's very good at what she does. She comes out at number six. She comes in, starts throwing everybody around. She tried desperately to get rid of Lana. So uh, that brought a smile to my face. Liv Morgan comes out at number seven. Mercedes had Lana on the apron, over the top already. Liv Morgan comes in, and she shoulder tackles Lana off the ring apron and eliminates Lana with an assist from Mercedes Martinez. Liv Morgan then went to the top rope in the Royal Rumble. I don't know why. She must have went brain dead for about 10 seconds. Why would you go to the top in the Royal Rumble? I don't understand it. So then Lana who was just eliminated by Liv Morgan, jumps on the ring apron. She sees Liv Morgan go up to the top. She pulls Liv Morgan off the top rope and eliminates Liv Morgan from the Royal Rumble because of Liv Morgan's sheer stupidity. So Liv Morgan was eliminated. So now both are gone. And I can't wait to see them go one-on-one on Raw, said nobody ever. And yes, they will be going one-on-one tomorrow night on Raw. Mandy Rose comes out at number eight. She tried to eliminate Nikki Cross, but she couldn't. Candice LeRae comes out at number nine. Tenacious C, like Mauro Ronaldo calls her. She goes up top immediately. Another one who goes right to the top rope. But she comes off with a drop kick to Mercedes Martinez. Beautiful moonsault to Nikki Cross, her version of the lion salt. Candice is very good. I love Candice LeRae. Bianca eliminates Mighty Molly. Alexa eliminated Mandy, but did not. She did not. Now, she thought she eliminated Mandy, but she did not. Fucking Otis, who is in love with Mandy Rose, as you guys know on SmackDown. There's this budding relationship between Mandy and Otis. Otis rolls from underneath the ring, and as she went to the floor, she landed on top of Otis, who was laying on his back. Now, I don't know where he came from. I don't know what he was doing underneath the ring. I really don't. I'm not even going to ask these questions because I love Otis and everybody loves Otis. So she fell on top of Otis. Her feet never hit the floor. He stayed on the outside and helped her back into the ring and gave her a second life in this Royal Rumble. I said it on Twitter. That was one of the funnest Royal Rumble saves that WWE has ever done. And the crowd massively popped for it. I thought it was fucking awesome. Everybody loves Otis. Everybody loves Otis with Mandy. And they want to see Otis get the blonde. So I thought this was great. Really fun stuff there. Sonya Deville came out of number 10. Mandy and Sonya double team Mercedes Martinez over the top rope, and she was eliminated. Goodbye, Mercedes Martinez. Thanks for coming. Kyrie Sane, number 11, double spear by Kyrie to Bliss and Cross. Kyrie Sane showed some real intensity in the first couple seconds upon her entering the Royal Rumble. Intensity that we have not seen. She's been very stagnant. She's been very just going with the flow. Nothing about Kyrie has been resonating on the main roster. Now, I know for a fact she's hit her ceiling. WWE's not going to push her further than what we see of her now, but she really showed some intensity here. She has not shown that type of intensity at all. It's been very weak. It looks like almost she doesn't want to be there. So it was nice to see some real intensity from Kyrie saying that I remember seeing in NXT. So double spear by Kyrie to Bliss and Cross, neckbreaker to Mandy, insane elbow to Candice LeRae. So she went and did her thing. Mia Yim, number 12, she went right for Kyrie with a neckbreaker. Eat defeat to Nikki Cross. Bianca tried to press Bliss over the top, but Nikki Cross saved her. Nikki was on the apron. Bianca eliminated Cross with Alexa Bliss in her grasp. She was swinging Alexa Bliss in a, a power slam position, using Bliss's legs to knock Nikki Cross off the apron. Sonia then knocked Mandy off the apron. She landed Mandy again into Otis's arms. So he saved her for a second time. Bianca comes from behind, shoves Sonya off the apron onto Otis, and he catches both of them, but he collapsed, and both Mandy and Sonya Deville were eliminated by Bianca Belair. Dana Brooke got lost. She made the wrong turn from catering and somehow ended up being number 13 in the Royal Rumble. Bianca pressed Candice over the top. Five eliminations at this point for Bianca Belair. Fucking awesome. Alexa Bliss eliminated Kyrie Sane as both were on the top rope. Doing what? I don't know. Why is anybody on the top rope? Tamina Snuka came in at number 14. This was a waste of an elimination, or a waste of a spot, I should say. Belair and Tamina 
started brawling, and Belair eliminated Tamina after she charged at Bianca, so that makes six eliminations now for Bianca Belair. Dakota Kai, number 15. Mia Yim eliminated by Alexa Bliss. Dakota Kai has been playing a very good heel in NXT. I was wondering if we were going to get Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox in the Royal Rumble, maybe get a little tease for what we're going to see on Wednesday. We did not. Chelsea Green, number 16. She enters and eliminates Dakota Kai instantly. Alexa Bliss then immediately eliminates Chelsea Green. So this was pretty much a waste of both Dakota Kai and Chelsea Green. Alexa tried to eliminate Dana Brooke. She landed on the apron. Bianca Belair finished it and knocked Dana off the apron. Goodbye. Uh, tell me how that cheesecake is in catering. I hear Titus is really upping the bakery game. Seven eliminations now for Bianca. I do not think Dana Brooke is a good WWE wrestler at all. So if you guys are wondering if you knew around here, Dana Brooke sucks. I'm sorry if that upsets you. Seven eliminations now for Bianca. Alexa and Bianca are the only two left in the ring. So we're up to number 16. And I stated it in my notes. Alexa Bliss is going to be the Iron Woman, isn't she? So she was proving me to be right. So we got seven eliminations for Bianca. Alexa and Bianca, the only two left. Bianca Belair eliminates Bliss on the apron. Eight eliminations for my girl Bianca Belair, man. Fucking great. This is exactly what I like to see in the Royal Rumble, man. Someone like Bianca, who I already predict is going to get called up, right? She's got Rhea Ripley at TakeOver in Portland. She's not going to win. She'll be on the main roster after WrestleMania. This was just a tease. This was just a taste of what you're going to get on the main roster. So they, so they put her in there and they gave everybody just a taste of what Bianca Belair is going to do. So Bianca's all by herself. Number 17 hits. Out comes Charlotte Flair. Bianca all by herself with Charlotte. And this is a match that everybody kind of want to see. They want to see this. They kind of want to see both of these women go at it. It's Charlotte and Bianca. You know how many times they always say these are two of the best female athletes in the WWE. At this point, up until this point, WWE was booking a perfect Royal Rumble. Everything was great. Alexa Bliss was eliminated. Bianca Belair, an NXT female, got eight eliminations. She's looking great. Her star is shining. You're getting a taste of what is to come, right? The next possible call-up. Everything is perfect up until this point. Then you got Charlotte and Bianca, something that I'm very interested in seeing myself. And this was going great so far. Number 18, a returning Naomi. She looked fantastic. Happy to see Naomi back. She could add some real spark to that SmackDown women's division. Number 19, Beth Phoenix. So this was a little tease. If Beth is in, maybe her husband Edge was going to be in the Royal Rumble. She went right for Charlotte. Naomi with a springboard crossbody on Charlotte and Beth. Number 20, my girl Tony Storm. She comes in. Didn't really expect much out of Tony Storm in this Royal Rumble, but happy to see her in there anyway. She went right after Charlotte. Bianca went for a 450 on Beth Phoenix. Charlotte kicked her leg out and eliminated Bianca Belair. So Bianca Belair was the Iron Woman of this thing. Very much well-deserved. Eight eliminations, 33 minutes and 20 seconds for Bianca Belair. Fucking awesome. They got it right. This is what the Royal Rumble is all about. Number 21, Kelly Kelly. Next. Who cares? She comes in, Lutez press to Naomi. Head scissors to Tony Storm. Stink face to Tony Storm. Shut down by Charlotte. Intense spot with Beth Phoenix trying to eliminate Charlotte. This was really, really good. Number 22, Sarah Logan. You know, that one who tries to be a Viking that's married to the Viking. She is number 22 here, went right after Charlotte after the issues that they had on Monday Night Raw for the last two weeks. Nobody cared, and she was eliminated quickly by Charlotte with an assist from Beth Phoenix. Charlotte eliminates Kelly Kelly. Beth Phoenix was busted open bad. I don't know how she was busted open. All I was seeing was red on the back of Beth Phoenix head. I don't know what it came from or where it came from, but she was busted open bad. So that was pretty much that. Number 23, Natalia. I mean, if you want somebody to put you to sleep during the Royal Rumble, just watch Natalia. Zia Lee, number 24, another sleeper. Selena Vega, number 25, another sleeper. She looked terrible in this thing. She looked great, but she looked terrible. Swinging DDT to Naomi from Vega. Head scissors to Beth Phoenix. DDT to Tony. So she got some offense in there, did Vega. Zia Lee, Beth, and Natty tried three on one. Charlotte over the top. Did not work. Number 26, Shotzi Blackheart from NXT. 
She came out. Naomi got flung from the ring down the steps. I don't know what the fuck was going on here, but she clung to the barricade and evaded elimination. So if Kofi wasn't going to do anything during the Royal Rumble, it was going to be Naomi because she's the female that always has these possible eliminations and then saves herself and gives you some crazy way back into the ring. So this was her version this year. She ran down the steps or got tossed from the ring. The momentum of the toss from the ring propelled her down the steps and she jumped to the barricade. So she hung on to the barricade. She sat on top of the barricade. She kind of weaseled her way over down the barricade on top of the Spanish announce table. And then... She makes it to the German announce table, stands up on the German announce table. She stays out there for a good couple of minutes. Number 28, Tegan Knox, Glam Slam by Beth to Tegan. Number 29, and this is where things fall apart, they crumble like a house of cards. Does this crumble? Number 29, and I reported this, that Santino Morella was in Houston for the Royal Rumble. I said it during the live stream today. I would not put this guy anywhere near the men's. He could very well be there for the women's. They wasted a spot in the women's Royal Rumble for Santino Morella to dress up in drag as Santina Morella. Can I ask, and I know I'm not the only one asking this question, where is Sasha Banks? Is Sasha Banks hurt? Is WWE not pushing Sasha Banks for whatever reason? Did she do or say something now? Is she really that invested in this rap album that she's recording? So much so that she would miss the Royal Rumble? It was the woman's birthday today. And I think a birthday present would have been a great Royal Rumble victory. That would have been the best present of all. And I'm pretty sure that if I know anything about Sasha Banks, even on her birthday, she would not request a day off, especially Royal Rumble Sunday. She would love to be in the Royal Rumble. I wonder if anything is going on in regards to Sasha Banks. She was actually my pick for the Royal Rumble. Now, if she is good to go and WWE opted not to use her and then we got Santina Morella instead, what a travesty. What a crock of shit that is, man. This was embarrassed. A waste. A perfect Royal Rumble up until this point. And this guy stands there and he's doing the fucking Cobra and he eliminates himself after a stare down with Beth Phoenix. He puts the sock on. He puts the Cobra. He Cobras himself and then he eliminates himself in the Battle Royal. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Number 30 was Shayna Baszler. Shayna eliminated Zia Lee, Tegan Knox, Vega. She got the cure for the clutch on Vega. She passed out on the apron. Goodbye. Over the top she goes. Shotzi, goodbye. Four for Shayna at that point. Carmella, number five. Tony, number six. Naomi, number seven. After all Naomi tried to do to get back in the ring, how she got back in the ring, you ask? She took the front portion of the commentary desk that she was standing on made a bridge from the commentary desk to this to the stairs something in which i thought she would jump to but she made a little bridge for herself she got back into the ring and then shana ended up eliminating her anyway after all that effort to get back into the ring shana said fuck your effort goodbye natalia and phoenix gave basil a heart attack then phoenix eliminated natalia and said listen there are no friends in this thing goodbye So Charlotte was on the outside. She reappeared and tried to eliminate the remaining women, but couldn't. Baszler and Charlotte faced off as the crowd started to go crazy at this point. Baszler eliminated Phoenix, leaving Baszler and Charlotte for the final two in the Royal Rumble. WWE knows how to give you a fucking stroke. Nobody wanted Charlotte to win the Royal Rumble. Nobody. There's only one person in that building that wanted Charlotte to win the Royal Rumble, and that's Vince McMahon. Charlotte used leg scissors to yank Baszler from the ring. Charlotte wins the Royal Rumble. Now, before this, Charlotte was on the apron and Baszler was frantically trying to get her to the, to the outside. She went over the top rope and Baszler had Charlotte on the ropes, tilted. All she had to do, all she had to do was lift Charlotte over the top 
and she did not do it. Shayna Baszler looked like a complete fucking buffoon in this Royal Rumble. Charlotte ends up winning. She used leg scissors to yank Baszler from the ring, from the apron. She wins the Royal Rumble for the first time in her career. Fireworks went off as Charlotte celebrated. Charlie Caruso got in the ring to interview Charlotte. She said she didn't care if people liked this or not. She just reminded everyone that she was a diamond that always shines brightly. And this was her division. This went from being the best Royal Rumble that the women have ever produced since its inception to the worst Royal Rumble that the WWE has done for the women so far. This was an absolutely asinine creative decision. I don't know who out there could justify Charlotte Flair winning the Royal Rumble. Look at what she said. She said, her, she said it herself. She didn't care if people liked this or not. That's a shoot. That's a shoot. For all the people that give her shit, for all the people that criticize WWE because they always do, Charlotte, 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 Charlotte gets everything handed to her. That was a shoot. And this was awful. WWE has some fucking balls on them. This is an absolute disgrace of a Royal Rumble. I would have gladly taken Shayna Baszler, even though Shayna Baszler wasn't even my pick to win the Royal Rumble. When I seen Sasha Banks wasn't even in this fucking thing, I was easily going with Shayna Baszler. Now, I knew Bianca Belair wasn't winning. I would have gladly taken Bianca Belair winning this thing, but God forbid WWE goes with some youth and something new and fresh and exciting. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't even think of doing that. I can't really shit on the Royal Rumble in, in general. I can't shit on it completely. Because WWE did something that I haven't seen them do in a very long time in a Royal Rumble. That is build up a superstar in this match by having them go and be the Iron Woman and have the most eliminations outside of Shayna Baszler. This Royal Rumble was dominated by NXT. As far as elimination goes, I can't shit on it completely. The outcome was one of the worst creative decisions that WWE has made in the last decade. I cannot justify Charlotte Flair winning this thing. And I hope that you know, for all you Becky Lynch fans out there, I hope that you know this signals the end of Becky Lynch. Her reign as the men, her reign as the Raw Women's Champion is over. I don't know what else to tell you. WWE gave you and everybody in the community, what, what you wanted at WrestleMania last year. We got Seth winning against Brock Lesnar. That was fucking ruined. That was ruined. That was a complete fucking backfire because of Seth Rollins. He's an idiot. Then we got Becky Lynch beating Ronda and Charlotte in the main event of WrestleMania last year. A main event that Becky wasn't even supposed to be a part of. For months leading to WrestleMania, it was always supposed to be Charlotte and Ronda Rousey for the Raw Women's Championship. Becky Lynch was only in there because she got her nose broken. And if you don't agree with that statement, I don't know what to tell you. You are one ignorant fool. Becky was only in there because of the reaction that she got and that picture that was plastered everywhere after Nia Jax busted her fucking face open. That one picture where Becky Lynch was wearing SmackDown shirt and blood seeping from her nose. That was the ticket to WrestleMania for Becky Lynch. If that didn't happen, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about Becky Lynch winning the main event of WrestleMania. It'd be Charlotte and Ronda. That was the only way Becky got in there. Vince McMahon was forced to push Becky Lynch in that situation. We all wondered what was going, what was going to happen following this. You know, WWE, they could, have gave, they, they could have given us, and the right main event for WrestleMania was Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey one-on-one. The company themselves, Vince himself, could not bear to see Charlotte not in that main event of WrestleMania. So what did they do? In a random happening, Asuka lost the title weeks before WrestleMania. She lost the SmackDown title. That was Charlotte's way in. She already had a brief history with Ronda Rousey at the Survivor Series, so they used that tie in there. And they played up the fact of a possible unification match. Winner takes all for the women. So they upped the ante for the first time ever women's main event. Charlotte's in there now. If you thought that WWE was going to give you Becky and Ronda without Charlotte, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. So the main event that we should have got, we didn't get. And we got Charlotte included. Because WWE couldn't bear to see Charlotte not in the main event. 
So what did we get last year? We got Becky winning. She pinned Ronda, right? And she became the undisputed Raw Women's Champion or the undisputed Women's Champion. She held both titles, Becky, two belts. She eventually lost one of the titles and Becky remained Raw Champion since then for Monday Night Raw up until the day we see her tonight at the Royal Rumble against Asuka. Charlotte wins the Royal Rumble and this spells the end for Becky Lynch. You do see what WWE is doing here. They are putting Charlotte in the main event, or not the main event, but they're putting Charlotte at WrestleMania for the Raw Women's Championship. You know for a fact it's not going to be Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania. Nobody wants to see that. I have absolutely no interest in seeing that whatsoever. And WWE knows that. So what WWE is going to do, they intentionally kept Ronda out of this Royal Rumble. I'm sure Ronda was ready and ready to go. I'm sure WWE knew Ronda was ready to go. Ronda was ready to go. I'm sure she would have loved to be in there. But no, 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 no. Charlotte's going to win this thing. Ronda is going to take the women's championship away from Becky Lynch because we got two more shows left. Now, it's not happening in Saudi Arabia, but it's going to happen at the Elimination Chamber. Ronda is going to come back on Raw at some point. It could be tonight. It could be next week. It could be two weeks, three weeks from now. It doesn't matter. Ronda will be back on the road to WrestleMania. Ronda is going to get her rematch one-on-one against Becky Lynch. Ronda is going to win the Women's Championship. She's going to take the Women's Championship to WrestleMania, and WWE, and most importantly, Vince McMahon, is going to get what he wants this year, something that he wanted last year, but he couldn't because of fan backlash. If he didn't do it, it would have been disastrous. He gave us what we wanted last year. This year, he's getting what he wants. It's going to be Ronda versus Charlotte, the main event he wanted last year, this year at WrestleMania. That's the way Vince McMahon is going to work. How Ronda takes the title from Becky, I don't know. I'm assuming Shayna Baszler is going to get involved. I'm assuming. Because if Charlotte's got Ronda, where does that leave Becky? Becky's going to get Shayna. Those are your two matches at WrestleMania. Ronda versus Charlotte for the Royal Women's Championship and Becky Lynch versus Shayna Baszler in a one-on-one match. And then you're going to get some sort of the horsewomen versus the horsewomen at the end of all this. And it's going to be for the Royal Women's Championship. That's what's going to happen. I don't want that to happen. I would have much rather taken Shayna versus Becky and Shayna be the new queen on Monday night. But not in Vince McMahon's eyes. He's getting his girl Charlotte as the Royal Women's Champion and she's going to have 12, what is it, 11 or 12? I lost count. And she's getting her Ronda match, the match that he wanted last year, this year. Trust me, it's happening. This was god-awful. Absolutely god-awful. Charlotte winning this thing is absolutely disgusting. Shame on Vince McMahon. Shame on Vince McMahon. Lacey Evans versus Bailey. This one was absolutely boring. I barely paid attention to this thing. I had no interest in this match whatsoever. And the fans obviously didn't have any interest in this match either. Sal Rex texted me a picture from Twitter. There were 300 people waiting in line during this match for the bathroom. This match was used as a proverbial bathroom break. And the match came off as one. This was awful. Lacey Evans got no reaction. Nobody gave a shit about this match at all. And this match did one thing. It showed you that Lacey Evans is not at all ready for a top women's spot on SmackDown. This was terrible. She's green as grass, botch after botch, sloppiness. This did not make Bailey look good either. This was just a bad match. Bailey pulled an old school playing possum card, faked a knee injury. Bailey dominated for several minutes, bringing the crowd down for a bit after the women's Royal Rumble match. I don't know if people genuinely didn't care about. I'm assuming people genuinely didn't care about this, but I honestly do think uh, the majority of the people watching this match were just fucking blown away at the disgust. Or they were just disgusted that Charlotte won the Royal Rumble. How to be. How to be. That crowd was into that Royal Rumble. And when Charlotte won, man, that fucking arena's air got sucked dry. Every fucking piece of air in that arena was just fucking sucked out of it. Terrible. So there was not much of a crowd reaction here. A uh, mixture of both. The Royal Rumble outcome previously. And then this match, nobody gave me a shit about. Bailey rolled to the floor. To slow Lacey. Lacey launched herself at Bailey on the floor. Lacey sidestepped her and then threw her into the ringside barricade. 
Bailey beat up Lacey near Lacey's daughter in the front row, but then threw her back into the ring. Bailey went for Bailey to belly, but Lacey blocked it and fought free. Then she gave Bailey a swinging neck breaker, standing moonsault. Lacey stood on the second rope, saluted, because I don't give a shit, and then went for a moonsault. Bailey countered by lifting her knees and then scored a three count with a pulling of the tights. So I'm assuming that this one also is not over yet. And it really should be. Nobody bought into Lacey Evans. The promo from SmackDown was god-awful. It was forced. It was one of the most forced things I've ever seen this company give us on their TV show. And Lacey Evans does not, does not deserve a top spot yet. Uh, she might not deserve a top spot, period. She hasn't shown me anything. And I'm not going to cheer for, for Lacey Evans, no matter how many tears she cries or whatever the fucking story she's trying to tell me is. It's forced. I see right through it. I can't buy into what you're telling me is genuine when all I see is them forcing her upon everybody. They're pretty much telling you, you have to like her. And we know she's not ready. And I think people are smart enough to see through that. This match was terrible. Easily the worst match of the evening. Moving on here. Daniel Bryan versus The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, for the Universal Championship. I was looking forward to this match, and I said back in 2014 that Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan at the Royal Rumble six years ago was Bray Wyatt's best one-on-one -on -one match to date. Incredible. That match was awesome. Daniel Bryan versus The Fiend in 2020, not as good as what they did six years ago, but this was a damn good match. This was easily Bray Wyatt's best match under The Fiend character. This was really good. So Daniel Bryan doing the yes chant at Minute Maid Park in front of 40,000 people. Gave you chills, bro. It gave you chills. It was just a great sight to see 40,000 people doing the yes chant. Bray's entrance as the field, you know, with the red lights and the way it was set up, it looked fantastic. Everybody on their phones when the lights went out. You've seen the fireflies just light up Minute Maid Park. you got red lasers going off for Bray Wyatt's entrance. This looked incredible. Absolutely incredible. He wore his custom title around his neck. Everything looked great. Fucking superstars, both of them are. One thing we all could collectively agree on with Bray Wyatt is that the red lighting needed to go. Every single match he's had, not the Finn Balor match at SummerSlam, but every match after that had red lighting. It was his gimmick. It was his thing. And everybody was crying for months. Get rid of the red lighting. It's making people go blind. I want to see Bray Wyatt under a natural setting. Tonight, they finally listened. I don't know what it took for these people to listen. I don't know who went to them and said, get rid of the red light. It might have been Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan themselves. I have no idea. If that's the case, thank fucking Christ these guys listened. Holy shit. I cannot begin to tell you how much more intimidating... Bray Wyatt looks in the Fiend mask under natural lighting. And I hope it stays. He looked more intimidating under the natural lighting than he did in the red lighting. The red lighting actually took away from the overall gimmick and the overall vibe of Bray Wyatt. This was great. So the fact that we got this strap match happening under natural lighting, I'm giving it a thumbs up already. The fact that I could fucking see these guys with my own two eyes and not go blind for 15 minutes was awesome. Can't even begin to tell you how much I loved looking at both of these guys in the natural lighting. I hated the red lighting, and I'm sure all of you did too. Brian, right away with the yes kicks. Brian up top, punching away with Wyatt. And up top, he got caught. Wyatt delivered a powerbomb on Brian. Vicious powerbomb. Wyatt starts lashing at him with the strap. Eight lashes to the back. MJF's got to live up to Bray Wyatt. Because Daniel Bryan at the end of this thing took about 40 lashes. I don't know what he's going to do with Cody, but he's going to have to live up to Bray Wyatt's lashings at the Royal Rumble. Wyatt's on the outside now. Brian dives by Wyatt, caught him, and threw him into the barricade and then into the steel post. So some idiot in the crowd, uh, he was sitting front row. I don't know. It was off camera, but I heard him in the background. He yelled, yowie, wowie, and Bray acknowledged, by, uh, acknowledged him saying, yowie, wowie, by grunting at him in his direction. I thought that was awesome. So that had to be... Uh, uh, a really nice spot for that guy who didn't think Bray Wyatt was going to acknowledge him, but he did anyway. So we got Bray acknowledging this goon in the crowd and then five more lashes to 
to Daniel Bryan at this point, 13 lashes in total. Yes, I was counting lashes. Bryan up top now. Fiend with two more lashes. His back is looking all fucked up. Bryan now in a tree of woe. Six more lashes to the back with the strap. 21 at this point in total. Wyatt with Bryan, center of the ring, choke slam. He wrenched his neck, which looks ridiculous. I would get rid of that if I'm Bray Wyatt. He's snapping the guy's fucking neck. Should be it. You know, it just looks silly. It really does look silly. So one more lash added to this. 22 in total by Wyatt with the strap. Wyatt went for sister Abigail. Bryan evaded. Big running knee. Very close near fall for Daniel Bryan on Wyatt. Fiend over the top. Bryan up top. Bryan took the fiend and the cameraman out. Down below on the outside with a big crossbody. Bryan pretty much hurled himself on top of Bray Wyatt. Fiend now up again. Instantly from the crossbody block. Threw Bryan into the steel steps and gave him a devastating clothesline. Man, almost took his head off. Wyatt threw him into the ring. Brian runs to the opposite side. So Bray Wyatt throws him into the ring. Brian with the wherewithal to exit the ring on the opposite side. And obviously these guys are joined together by a strap. Brian pulls the strap and launches Bray Wyatt into the steel post with the strap on the apron now. Brian with a flying knee. Wyatt up immediately and then a clothesline by Bray Wyatt. Five more lashes, 27 in total at this point. Wyatt cleared off the German announce table. Brian laid out on the table like he was a sacrificial lamb. Wyatt up on the table, standing above Bray, uh, Daniel Bryan. Brian, laying on the table, takes his right foot and starts kicking Bray Wyatt in the balls. Four times kick Bray Wyatt below the belt. DDT onto the table by Brian. Brian up. Going to work on Wyatt with the strap. 14 lashes for Brian at this point with the strap. Back in the ring. Brian up top. Missile drop kick. Yes kicks. Mixed with lashes. So he's doing yes kicks. Strap. Yes kicks. Strap. Final yes kick. Fiend goes down. He gets right back up. Fiend gets up. He starts yelling at Brian. I want more. Give it to me. Asking for more punishment. Wyatt goes down again. Brian stomping away on his face. So what I thought was one of the best spots of the entire night. Brian went for a big knee again. Wyatt caught him mid-knee in midair and gave him a Sister Abigail in one fluid motion. Brian kicked out. That was incredible. Fiend with more lashes. Brian up. Slap Wyatt in the face. Fiend charges. Brian with the kicks to the face. Mandible claw. He gets the mandible claw on Brian who sat up on top, on the top turnbuckle. Middle of the ring now with the mandible claw. This is all but over. Brian trying to get to the ropes. He's trying to get the yes lock. Brian then eventually gets the yes lock on the Fiend with the strap. Wyatt reversed it. Mounted him with some punches. Four more lashes for Wyatt. Sister Abigail again. Brian received uh, the Sister Abigail and then reversed it into a roll up. Brian with the running knee. Two and a half. Crowd is going crazy at this point. They want Brian to do it. Wyatt up. Brian up. Brian starts lashing at Wyatt. Wyatt standing there laughing. He's laughing as Daniel Bryan is stra taking the strap and whipping him in the chest with the strap. He's laughing. Mandible claw, pin, Wyatt retains. Lights go out. Wyatt disappears. This match was probably the best match The Fiend has had. And both of his best matches were with Daniel Bryan. No shocker there. But this was a predictable outcome. And I thought this was a really fun strap match. It did the job. I, I just don't know where Daniel Bryan goes from here. This is two losses now to The Fiend. I don't know where he goes from here. I don't know if he stays in the universal title picture. I don't know if he stays there. And then we include Roman and Bryan and Wyatt making a triple threat match at WrestleMania. I don't know. I don't know where Daniel Bryan goes after this. I really don't. Maybe it takes a couple of weeks off. And like I said, I predicted maybe Sheamus... When Braun Strowman inevitably beats Shinsuke Nakamura for the IC title, Sheamus takes the title off of Braun Strowman. Maybe we get Bryan going for the Intercontinental Championship in a match with Sheamus at WrestleMania. At least this time it won't go 17 seconds. So I don't know what's going to happen there, but Bryan seemingly is done with The Fiend. There really isn't anything else for him to prove. It was a great match. It was fun. This was awesome. And it just sucks, man. It really does suck. I've said this on multiple podcasts that I did over the last couple of weeks. 
You know, Roman Reigns is never going to get that type of reaction. When Roman inevitably fights the Fiend, Roman is never going to get that type of reaction that Brian got from this crowd. It's not going to get it at WrestleMania. It's going to be near impossible for Roman to get that type of reaction. It's going to be near impossible for Roman to build up that much support from the fans to take down The Fiend. If there's one person in this company that the fans are going to believe to take down The Fiend, it's going to be Daniel Bryan. And that's a testament to how good Daniel Bryan is that people wanted him, of all people, to take down The Unstoppable Fiend. It's a testament to how good Daniel Bryan is as a babyface. Look at what he did and look at the emotion and the reaction that he got from that crowd tonight. Roman Reigns is not going to even come close to that. And if WWE tries, it's going to be a failure. I wish Daniel Bryan was the one to take down The Fiend, but it certainly looks like it's going to be Roman Reigns and we're going to get him winning the Elimination Chamber more than likely. Moving on. Becky Lynch, Asuka, Raw Women's Championship. At this point, the crowd seemed a little out of it. Uh, mixed with Charlotte and that terrible Lacey evans Bailey match and then the emotion that went into the Daniel Bryan match. At this point, I think it was just a long evening for everybody there in Houston. This was a match I was very much looking forward to, a match that I thought was going to be great. They were going to have to live up to what they did last year. I don't know if they were going to be able to do that. Last year's match was really fucking good. It was probably the best match in the entire night. So Becky Lynch and Asuka, the story going into this thing is that Becky needs to repay her debt. The company, she says, was protecting her because she didn't want, or they didn't want her to go against Asuka because they thought Asuka was going to really, you know, hurt the man or the top prize in WWE. They wanted to save Becky Lynch from Asuka. But then Becky Lynch played up her contract per storyline and she told WWE management, I'm not signing a new contract extension unless you give me a match with Asuka. And that's how this match came to be. So, like I said, the crowd was a little out of this thing at this point in the show. And a mixture of things went into this. Charlotte winning, like I said, the terrible women's championship match from SmackDown. The overall emotion from Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt. So the crowd was a little out of it. So we got a front forward suplex by Becky on Asuka. They were on the apron. And Becky Lynch did a front face suplex to Asuka. Asuka hit the floor in the most ridiculous fashion, man. All you heard was Asuka hit face first on the outside mat. It looked terrible. Absolutely. And, and I mean, it, it looked great, but it sounded fucking terrible. So a missile drop kick off the air from by Becky, and then she's on the outside after the missile drop kick, does a Bexploder into the barricade, back in the ring, Becky off the top with a top rope leg drop for a two count. Asuka, such a tough woman. Becky was connecting with some uppercuts on Asuka. Asuka delivered a knee to the face. She then drove Becky into the mat with a fisherman seated suplex for a two count. Both on the apron. Asuka with some kicks to the midsection. Running hip attack to Becky into the steel post. Becky still on the apron. Face into the turnbuckle. Asuka in ring. Second rope. Becky blocks a suplex attempt. Springboards off the ropes with a kick. Off the second rope now, Becky takes Asuka and drives her into the mat off the second rope with a rock bottom for a two count. Now, Becky now, top rope, code breaker, Asuka, she caught Becky off the top rope. Arm bar now by Asuka, Becky reversed it into a pin for a two count before Asuka transitions into the Asuka lock. Becky makes it to the ropes quickly. Asuka frustrated, German suplex to Becky, Asuka kicking Becky right in the face, Lynch is down she nailed Becky with some of these kicks, man. They look to connect big time. So ref tells Asuka to back away. Referee was going to stop the match. And Becky, seeing the referee was going to ring the bell and stop the match because these kicks were that fucking vicious. Becky holds on to the referee's leg, begging for him not to stop the match. More kicks from Asuka to Becky's face. Looked like Lynch was knocked out. Asuka goes for the cover after these kicks. A really delayed two count by the referee. Becky kicks out. You could see at this point that WWE is trying unintentionally, or they're trying intentionally to make this epic. And they're failing at it miserably. So I wish it was a little bit more of an organic feel. They, they tried so hard to have this come off as epic, and it's like, come on, dude, really? Oscar with the Oscar lock. Becky reverses. Pin, two count. 
Oscar misses a kick. Reverse DDT by Becky. Cover, only a two count. Both women are down. So both women are now up slugging it out. Becky goes for the disarm her. Oscar tried for the green miss to the face. And Becky kicked Oscar. This looked terrible. Oscar stood there in the most delayed reaction possible with the mist. I don't know if you guys picked up on it. It's like Asuka stopped mid-mist. And she waited for Becky to kick her. So she kicked her mid-mist. The mist shot up in the air and landed in Asuka's eyes. So the mist went into Asuka's face, disarmed her with the mist all over Asuka's face. And Asuka taps out to Becky and Becky Lynch retains. So that was pretty much it. Uh, I don't know where Asuka goes from here. I really don't. I love Asuka. There's just no direction for her. And Becky's days are numbered. Charlotte winning the Royal Rumble means Becky Lynch's days are numbered. You're going to get Ronda. You're going to get Shayna. And it's happening. It's happening. Charlotte and Ronda is happening at WrestleMania. I am convinced Charlotte and Ronda Rousey is happening at WrestleMania. You're getting the main event that Vince wanted last year that he didn't get. And Becky, she ain't going into WrestleMania as the women's champion. Because there's no fucking shot in hell that this company's giving you Charlotte and Becky again at WrestleMania. It's going to be Becky and Shayna. So that's your double women's main event. Or your double feature women's uh, showcase at WrestleMania. Book it. It's going to happen. If I'm wrong, I'd be shocked. I hope I'm wrong. I really am. We should, be getting, we, we should either be getting Becky and Ronda. Or we should be getting Becky and Shayna. Charlotte should not be getting a championship match at WrestleMania. It's sickening how this company just panders to Charlotte over and over and over again. They literally sucked the air out of that arena tonight. And she is probably on par, probably more so now than I think ever, one of the more hated females in all the company. Just because the way that WWE is booking her. It's coming. I'd be shocked if it doesn't happen. Men's Royal Rumble match, we got the main event upon us. The Men's Royal Rumble built entirely around Brock Lesnar. I knew going into this match that WWE was going to have a very difficult time booking this thing. I said it. It's either Lesnar gets eliminated quick and we get that shock factor and we find out the opponent for Lesnar early on via the elimination. Or if that's the case... If that was the case and that was to happen, it was definitely going to a SmackDown guy. The winner of the Royal Rumble is going to a SmackDown guy. So I didn't know which way they were going to go. The early elimination, I was even contemplating the elimination on Brock Lesnar, the guy who eliminated him, getting, him getting eliminated. And there's your match right there because I, we all assume that whoever eliminated Brock Lesnar was automatically going to get the match at WrestleMania against him. That was the whole purpose of this Royal Rumble. And then Roman Reigns more than likely was going to go on to win. Or the guy who eliminated Lesnar can go on to win the Royal Rumble. And I said that could have easily been a waste of the Royal Rumble because with the elimination of Brock, he kind of found out who his opponent's going to be at WrestleMania anyway. So you might as well just save that and go with a SmackDown guy winning the Royal Rumble if that's the case. They had a multitude of ways they could go with this thing. How did they go? How did they go? For one, they buried most of the main roster. They buried most of the main roster. Now... The original list of superstars changed throughout the day. Whatever was listed internally, whatever was listed on the dirt sheets and reported, the 27 that was listed, it did not end up being the same. Otis and Tucker were not there. Rusev and Lashley were taken out. Gallows and Anderson were in the Royal Rumble. So we've seen a few different changes here and there for the Royal Rumble. Our truth was not in the Royal Rumble. Cain Velasquez wasn't in the Royal Rumble. Thank fucking Christ. Thank Christ. I'm glad. Kane wasn't in the Royal Rumble. So before the match, Michael Cole said Rusev and Bobby Lashley got into an altercation in the parking lot. And they were not medically cleared to be in the Rumble. Now, I was happy about this, but I was unhappy at this at the same time. Because I know I've given Bobby Lashley a very difficult time over the last couple of years. But I would have loved to see him go one-on-one with Brock Lesnar. So they took that away from us with Bobby Lashley not participating in the Royal Rumble. I don't know if they did... I don't know if they did us a favor, Bobby Lashley a favor. I don't know. Because if Lashley went in there and got eliminated in six seconds, 
then would it would have been a complete waste. If he went in there and did anything with Lesnar, it probably would have been short and it wouldn't have been all that exciting at all. And I don't think WWE is going to give Bobby Lashley Brock Lesnar ever. They feel like he doesn't deserve that, that type of treatment. I don't know. Because that's all he wants. The reason why he came back to the WWE is for the Brock Lesnar match anyway. And he hasn't even sniffed a Brock Lesnar altercation, which I find completely funny. So they were not in the match, not medically cleared, quote unquote, to be in the Royal Rumble. So that left two spots open, two more additional spots on top of the original three that were left open. So now it's five, five spots left open. Obviously, Brock Lesnar draws number one. Elias draws number two. So he comes out and this made sense. He gets to play his guitar. He gets to do his shtick. He played guitar and called Lesnar a gorilla. And Heyman, his zookeeper, his fat zookeeper. Now, this made sense, which gave Elias the opportunity, like I said, to do his thing before getting beaten by said gorilla and eliminated in six seconds. Now, Lesnar was so pissed off that Elias was just stalling and stalling and stalling. Lesnar tried to run out of the ring towards Elias, and he almost killed himself in the process. He launched himself out of the ring underneath the bottom rope to a point where I honestly thought he injured himself. He was so intense exiting the ring. I legit thought he almost tripped over himself. It was just unbelievable. He ran at Elias like he wanted to fucking snap this guy in half. So Lesnar uh, was not even waiting for the match to start. He didn't even wait for Elias to get into the ring. So Elias is in the ring. He gets beat up by Lesnar. He yelled at Heyman to get Elias' guitar. He took the guitar and smashed it over Elias' back. Goodbye, Elias. Eliminated over the top rope. So there you go. Academic. Eric Rowan comes in at number three. He's in and he's out. Clothesline missed. Brock clotheslined him over the top rope. Rowan lasted eight seconds. And no, Lesnar was not interested in what was in Eric Rowan's cage. Bobby Roode came in at number four. He was not on the original list. So this was a late entry. Bobby Roode comes in at number four, clothesline, F5, Roode dumped over, three eliminations for Brock. John Morrison, remember when I said Morrison announcing himself in the Royal Rumble was a waste of a spot? Morrison's in, they, they, he looked at Lesnar, Lesnar was looking at this guy laughing, he was literally laughing as John Morrison was on the outside waiting to get into the ring. Belly to belly, Morrison's gone, that's it. Remember when people were excited about John Morrison coming back to the WWE? Where's that excitement now? A waste of a spot. Five. He came in at number five and was eliminated in five seconds. Absolutely disgusting. Kofi Kingston comes in at number six. This is where things got a little interesting. Kofi comes in at number six. He went right after Brock. Fans really rallied behind Brock Lesnar. Blasted Kofi with a suplex. Kofi was not eliminated. He lasted up until the next guy came out, which was a first tonight here in this Lesnar Royal Rumble. Rey Mysterio comes out at number seven. This is getting even more interesting. So he was taking his time getting into the ring. He didn't rush down to the ring like some fucking goober. He took his time getting into the ring, double clothesline to Kofi and Rey after Rey tried to go low on Lesnar. So Lesnar was trying to take both of these guys out, but it was a two-on-one advantage now. Both Kofi and Ray have similar things. They were both destroyed by Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship. So Mysterio blasted with a German by Brock. Kofi and Ray both rolled to the outside to take a breather here. So out comes number eight, Big E. I'm loving the order of these entries into the Royal Rumble. This was fucking awesome. I got to admit. Big E came out next. He rallied the troops on the outside. It was now a three-on-one. So Lesnar's in the ring. Kofi gets in there. Trouble in paradise to Lesnar. Big ending by Big E to Brock Lesnar. Look fucking great. Lesnar's on the middle rope now after the big ending. 6-1-9 by Rey Mysterio. Triple team. Rey charged. He got tossed over the top by Lesnar. All this for nothing. He got tossed over the top. So Big E... This is amazing. This was one of the best spots of the entire night. So Ray jumped off of Big E's back, like Jeff Hardy jumping off Matt Hardy's back. So we got Ray jumping off Big E's back. 
Mysterio got caught by Lesnar. He was dumped over the fucking turnbuckle to the outside. He's gone. Lesnar jumped off of Big E's back, launching himself onto Kofi Kingston with a flying clothesline. I was beside myself watching this shit. Clotheslined Big E after that, over the top rope, and he eliminated Kofi by tossing him over the top rope. Lesnar is all by himself once again. So I'm laughing at the fucking domination of Brock Lesnar, and I'm laughing not only at that, but I'm laughing at the same time about how the WWE is single-handedly burying their main roster for Brock Lesnar. At this point, I'm asking myself, who is the benefactor of this fucking main roster burial? Is it going to be Cain Velasquez? Is it going to be somebody that we just detest? So this is what's going through my head at this point. Cesaro comes in at number nine. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. Cesaro Lesnar is a match that a lot of people in the community are just, you know, it's one of those things that they're fantasizing about. Like everybody thinks Cesaro deserves a shot. One-on-one. Everybody thinks that Cesaro and Lesnar would be a great match. And that we've never seen it before. So I'm like, hey, we're going to see it. We're going to see some glimpse of, of what we've been wanting with Lesnar and Cesaro. This is interesting. Knees to Cesaro. Suplex to Cesaro. Eliminated in 12 seconds. At this point, I'm getting text after text after text from people who know that I'm going to be shitting on this show disgusted at this Royal Rumble so far. This was a complete fucking missed opportunity by WWE here with Cesaro. I was actually disappointed. Shelton Benjamin comes in at number 10. Now, Shelton Benjamin and Brock Lesnar have a history. They were roommates or they trained together. They got a history back in their college days. Heyman greets Shelton Benjamin outside before he enters the ring, hugs Shelton Benjamin Tells him he's happy to see him, happy that he's getting this opportunity in the Royal Rumble. He enters the Royal Rumble. He's hugging Brock Lesnar. They're fucking jovial. I've never seen Brock Lesnar smile the way he smiled with Shelton Benjamin in the ring. They're hugging. And at one point, they make a truce. It looks like they're going to double team everybody here in the Royal Rumble from this point on. So they're standing. The buzzer's waiting to go off. They're standing there together. You got Shelton in in front of Brock and Shelton's looking at the next guy coming out. Brock takes Shelton Benjamin and dumps him over the top rope after teasing a friendship. Shelton Benjamin gets eliminated. It's nine eliminations by Brock Lesnar up until this point. So I'm loving what's going on here, but at the same time, I'm laughing because of the sheer burial of the main roster. Now, up until this point, up until this point, I'm not going to be too hard on them burying the Ross because look, in fact, who they buried. Eric Rowan. Nobody gives a shit about Eric Rowan. He's going nowhere. Bobby Roode. Nobody gives a shit about Bobby Roode. They haven't given a shit about Bobby Roode since his heel days in NXT. He's a waste. John Morrison. John Morrison deserved better, but WWE already, already killed his mystique in the first three weeks of him coming back on SmackDown. This was no different. John Morrison should not have been in the number five position and should not have been eliminated in the manner he was against Brock Lesnar. Kofi Kingston, I think Kofi Kingston's pretty much untouchable. We still haven't really gotten Kofi Kingston, you know, saying anything about him losing in eight seconds to Brock Lesnar. He laughs about it. He jokes about it. But that's the only thing I could really, I guess, pin him on. Why would you joke about something like that? It's a serious issue. But Kofi Kingston's pretty much bulletproof. Everybody loves Kofi Kingston. Everybody's going to love Kofi Kingston well after this. So they did a great sequence. That sequence with Ray and Big E was fucking great. It was really good stuff. Mysterio's Teflon. Nobody's going to hate on Rey Mysterio. He was bulletproof. Big E, bulletproof. The New Day is bulletproof. Cesaro, he's a dead car. He's a dead guy on the main rise. He's a fucking mid-card act. He's a mid-card purgatory. So what are you burying? Shelton Benjamin? Does anybody even realize that Benjamin's still employed after tonight? No. So who realistically are they burying? Shinsuke Nakamura comes out next. Nakamura got him with some stiff kicks. This was actually a throwback to their days in Japan. You know, they made mention of it. They met in Japan years ago. This was great. Nakamura got him with some stiff kicks. Nakamura went for the Kinshasa. He got caught mid-Kinshasa, over the top rope, eliminated. That's 10 eliminations now for Brock Lesnar. And Shinsuke Nakamura really hasn't done much of anything since making the main roster. So again, who are they burying? 
They're showcasing you a burial of their main roster talent. They're feeding literally everybody to Brock Lesnar when they don't have to. But who's Shinsuke Nakamura? He's the Intercontinental Champion, yes, but who is he? Nobody takes him seriously at all. So he's eliminated. MVP. He comes in at number 12. This was a waste. This could have easily went to another another NXT talent. This could have went to anybody else. But I guess I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, I guess you got to bury somebody. If you got to bury somebody, have it be a fucking returning MVP. Nobody gives a shit about this guy. F5, over the top rope, goodbye. 11 eliminations. In and out. In and out. Then we got something awesome. Something that I did not think they were going to do. Keith Lee. Limitless Keith Lee in the Royal Rumble. Lesnar looks shocked. Lesnar looks over at Paul Heyman. They're standing face to face. Lesnar looks over at Paul Heyman and says, Who is this motherfucker? You seen him, heard him right on camera. Who is this motherfucker? This was great. I looked at this, and I know you guys agree with me on this. You looked at this, and you said this is a WrestleMania main event. That felt big. It felt epic, and I'm happy I'm seeing it. If it lasts fucking 10 seconds or 10 minutes, I'm glad it was happening. This stare down was fucking epic. Shoulder tackle, Lee. Just by Keith Lee's body language in this thing, you knew he was excited as fuck to be in there with Brock Lesnar. I love me some Keith Lee. He looked like he was ready for this opportunity and he was going to live in the moment. Shoulder tackled Lesnar down. Lesnar goes down. Double clothesline. Both men take each other out like Warrior Hogan back in the day in the Royal Rumble. So Keith Lee is down. Out comes Braun Strowman at number 15. Lesnar. It's looking grim for Lesnar right now with Keith Lee and now Braun Strowman in there. I thought this was going to be the opportunity for Lesnar to be eliminated. Lesnar's in for 20 minutes right now. So Lesnar is on the inside. Lee is on the outside. Strowman exits the ring and he does the... (laughs) You know, Braun Strowman can run fast. So even Corey Graves is asking... Why is he leaving the ring? Brock Lesnar is in the weakest of his state so far in this Royal Rumble. Why are you on the outside? What an idiot for leaving the ring. So he gets back into the ring. Lee's in the ring there. Suplexes to Lee. Suplexes to Shrum. The the suplexes to Lee were fucking brutal. A man that weighs 300 pounds collapsing on his neck from a German suplex from Brock Lesnar, fucking ridiculous. The fact that Brock Lesnar muscled Keith Lee and Braun Strowman up for four suplexes after sweating like a fucking dog in this Royal Rumble was unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Lee and Strowman brawl near the ropes. What is the first thing someone tells you about being in the Royal Rumble? Stay low. Braun Strowman is a fucking idiot. And I guess I guess Keith Lee could be labeled as one as well. They're brawling near the ropes and they're teetering on the ropes and Lesnar comes over and dumps both of them over the top rope. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. In comes Ricochet, number 15. I'm like, this ain't gonna end good. Ricochet was treated like a fucking loser on Monday Night Raw. He jumps in off the ropes. Lesnar catches him into a backbreaker. Nearly broke this guy in fucking half. German suplex to Ricochet. He lasted until the next guy came out. Number 16 was Drew McIntyre. Here we go. This is going to be good. This is something that I wanted to see. A stare down between Lesnar and McIntyre. I asked myself, who's going to be the benefactor of this Lesnar burial of the main roster? Are they going to build up a new superstar? I've been waiting for this moment all week. Was WWE going to do it? So McIntyre enters the match slow. He's making it epic. He looks at Lesnar and he tells Lesnar, I've been waiting a long time for this, you son of a bitch. Looked right at Brock Lesnar. Epic. So Ricochet, who just received the German suplex, is behind Brock Lesnar. Low blows Brock Lesnar. Lesnar. Feeling the effects of the of the low blow. Teetering on the ropes. McIntyre bounces off the ropes. 
Claymore kick, and Lesnar is eliminated. Minute Maid Park absolutely goes fucking crazy. Everybody on their feet. I was shocked. I was shocked that it was McIntyre. I was shocked that WWE finally did something right. This has to be the guy. This has to be the guy who wins the Royal Rumble. You're not going to eliminate Brock Lesnar and then not go on to WrestleMania. Now, McIntyre was so excited that he pretty much was staring a hole right in Brock Lesnar. Lesnar sold the effect of this Claymore kick like it was death. Sweating all over the place. He sold it like he was fucking just completely obliterated. Look great. Lesnar is so great at what he does. We can hate on Lesnar all we want. We can yell at him for being basic and fucking shit all over him for being one move Lesnar. But he sold this fucking magnificently. So Drew absolutely destroyed Ricochet at this point. He was left in the ring for a little bit by himself. He took Ricochet and launched this guy into fucking space. He flung Ricochet over the top rope. Ricochet did this propeller-like fucking spin on the outside. He fucking went over the top rope in the most brutal way I could fucking even imagine. Done. So McIntyre went back to staring at Lesnar. Now, I thought Lesnar, he finally got up. I thought Lesnar was going to go back into the ring and eliminate Drew McIntyre in frustration. That did not happen. Lesnar got up. Paul Heyman looked stunned. He took the WWE Championship and Brock Lesnar, and they exited via the timekeeper's area and left the building. That was it. I even thought even then that Lesnar at some point during the match was going to come back out and eliminate Drew McIntyre. That, that, that did not happen. McIntyre eliminated Lesnar and he was in the clear for now. For now. Number 17, The Miz. Future Shock DDT. Claymore, Miz is gone. Another waste of an elimination or a waste of a spot in the Royal Rumble. Number 18, AJ Styles, McIntyre and Styles. Nice little back and forth here. McIntyre's tackle, uh, tackle Styles. AJ went for the calf crusher. To take out the big man. Dolph Ziggler comes in at number 19. McIntyre tossed Ziggler fully across the ring with an overhead suplex. Works on both Ziggler and Styles by himself. He's owning the ring for now. And number 20 comes Carl Anderson. He immediately comes to Styles' aid, saving him from elimination by McIntyre. Dolph with a super kick to Drew. They got some history. Dolph Ziggler brought Drew McIntyre to the main roster. They were a little tag team for a little bit. They tried to eliminate Drew. Everybody in the match at this point tried to eliminate Drew McIntyre because he was the one that posed the biggest threat. Number 21 came out. Number 21 came out. If you can know me. Unbelievable, man. Edge, number 21. The sweet, melodious tones of Miles Kennedy singing Metalingus by Alter Bridge. On the PA system. Now, we all knew it was going to be because it was reported everywhere. I didn't know when he was going to show up. I didn't know what kind of role he was going to play in this thing. Edge comes out at number 21. Absolutely unreal reaction. It is a moment that you're going to go back and rewatch over and over and over again. It's going to be something that you're going to show your kids. You're going to show Edge to your kids If you got kids, if you got kids now, you probably showed them Edge. If you haven't had kids yet and you get your kids onto the pro wrestling thing, like I know I will do my kids eventually in the future, you're going to show them Edge and then you're going to show them his unbelievable return. Nine years to the day from 2011 and he retired. Nick, spinal stenosis, he comes back in 2020 and enters the Royal Rumble. I know for a fact people got emotional over this. It was crazy, fucking just sheer shock. I stopped taking notes at this point because I just wanted to live in the moment. It was unbelievable. And he's going to have a major role at WrestleMania per reports. We don't know what, and we'll talk about that in a second because it looks like it was certainly teased in the Royal Rumble. He looked fantastic. He's got the little gray in the beard like I do. He looks fucking unbelievable for his age. Went right after McIntyre. Spears everyone in sight. Spears to Styles after a stare down. What a moment. Absolutely unbelievable moment. Number 22, Baron Corbin. Crowd couldn't give a shit here. Ziggler trying to hang on, but Corbin saved him. Edge eliminated AJ Styles. Um, This is definitely going to play into something in the future. 
I do think that Edge is going to be back on Monday Night Raw. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Number 23, Matt Riddle. Fuck this company. Matt Riddle got eliminated in about a minute. Why even put Matt Riddle in the Royal Rumble if you are going to eliminate him in about a minute? Now, there was a report by Ryan Satin earlier in the evening that Lesnar and Riddle had a backstage altercation before the Royal Rumble. You know, I don't know what it had to do with, but apparently Lesnar looked at Riddle and Riddle looked at Lesnar. And Lesnar asked Riddle, what is the reality of the situation? And that's what Ryan Satin had reported. There was something along the lines of Lesnar asking Riddle, what is the reality of this situation here? Now, I don't know if Lesnar actually took offense to what Riddle said, that he wants Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania and he wants to retire Brock Lesnar. But if I'm Lesnar, I'm looking at that and I'm taking that as a sign of respect that Matt Riddle of all, of everybody wants you at WrestleMania. So I don't know what happened there. So hopefully more details to come on that. And that was actually reported during the show. Matt Riddle going right after McIntyre. Riddle with a big knee to edge. Corbin eliminates Riddle in less than a minute. And then Baron Corbin made fun of Matt Riddle on the way out and mocked him with his hand gesture. Awful. Awful. This is, I don't know if this is punishment for what happened with Lesnar or if WWE just doesn't think highly of of Matt Riddle at this moment. I don't know. I don't know why you would put him in there and eliminate him in less than a minute when this guy is potentially one of the biggest pieces of your company's future. It's fucking ridiculous to me. Now, I'm glad. I didn't even think that he was going to be in the Royal Rumble. At this point, I would have rather him not be in the Royal Rumble if it was going to be eliminated in a minute. 24, Luke Gallows. Drew McIntyre eliminates Corbin. Thank God. Goodbye. Orton eliminates the OC. So both of the OC are gone, which plays into what I said about Randy Orton, AJ Styles, and the OC mixed with Edge. I do think that the interaction we got between Orton and Edge... And the OC, Styles, and the OC, Gallows and Anderson, I do think that all of these parties are going to be involved with each other at WrestleMania, whether it's Edge versus Orton, or whether it's Edge and Orton versus the OC, with another partner of their choosing, I don't know. But it looks like we're getting something with Edge and Orton and the OC going into WrestleMania. Should be very interesting. Should be very interesting. So, we got... Luke Gallows eliminated by, uh, actually, I'm sorry, Corbin was eliminated by Drew McIntyre. Magic Killer by the OC to Edge. Randy Orton, he comes in number 25. RKO to both Gallows and Anderson. Edge and Orton eliminate the OC. Number 26, Roman Reigns. He somehow draws a high number every single year. Spear to Ziggler. He eliminates Ziggler, does Reigns. Number 27, Kevin Owens. Cannonballs all over the place. Stunner to Reigns. Stunner to Orton. Owens tries to eliminate Edge, does not. Aleister Black, number 28. Black Master Drew McIntyre, look great. So at this point, I'm like, there's nobody left. I guess we're not getting John Cena. I guess we're not getting Cain Velasquez, because the only two people that were left were Samoa Joe and Seth Rollins. So Aleister Black with a Black Master Drew McIntyre, number 29, Samoa Joe, went right after Black. Joe and Owens going at it in the center of the ring. Every man for himself. You know they're tagging on Monday Night Raw, but they didn't give a shit at this point. Every man for himself. Seth Rollins, number 30. The clown himself, for number 30. Now, I knew he wasn't going to win, but he came out at number 30. He came out with Murphy and AOP. Now, Murphy was actually originally scheduled to be in the Royal Rumble. They did not put him in the Royal Rumble, but he still had an integral part in this thing anyway. So Rollins came out with Murphy and AOP. Joe and Owens exit the ring. All of them start brawling at ringside. Rollins dragged Edge underneath the ropes, threw him into the barricade. Orton goes flying over the announce desk. Seth is in the ring. Stomped to Roman. Black went for his moonsault. Murphy tripped him mid-moonsault as he tried to bounce off the middle rope. Seth eliminated Black. Another thing I fucking hated Black did not last long enough in this thing, and he he should have been the Bianca Belair of this Royal Rumble, really. After Lesnar got eliminated, it should have been Black lasting that, that long period in the Royal Rumble. Uh, I don't know. I don't understand why this company seems to just fuck up continuously with Aleister Black. Owens tossed Rollins over the top, but AOP's on the outside. They caught Rollins on the way down, and they rolled him back into the ring. Owens and Joe were eliminated by Rollins and the help of his thugs. 
So Rollins eliminated Joe and Owens. Brawls at ringside now. Everybody going at it again. We got Orton, Edge, Roman, Rollins, and Drew McIntyre. Rollins at this point lost all of his insurance policy because they brawled up the ramp. Alistair Black got involved because of Buddy Murphy. So it looks like we are getting Alistair Black joining Owens and Joe in the battle against Rollins, AOP, and Buddy Murphy. Because that's what it seemed. Murphy eliminated or helped aid in the elimination of Alistair Black. So it looks like Alistair Black is joining this ongoing feud on Monday Night Raw with Seth Rollins. So that's pretty much confirmed by what we've seen here at the Royal Rumble. So we got these five guys left. Rollins has no more insurance policy at Raw uh, on uh, at the Royal Rumble now. All of his guys left, and they brawled up the ramp. So Rollins, seeing this, he tried to negotiate with Roman Reigns. You know, we're brothers. He tried to do the old shield fist bump. And it was at this point, before all this, he actually gave Reigns a stomp. He gave Reigns a stomp, and then he wants to try and negotiate with them. You know, we're brothers. We, we could do this thing. Let's get, every, let's get rid of everybody, and then come down to me and you like old days. Shield. So Reigns didn't want to hear any of this. Reigns says no. Superman punch. Power slam by Orton. Claymore by Drew. And Drew throws Seth over the top. And Seth Rollins was eliminated in the most anticlimactic way possible. He was just, it, it was like Rollins was just another body over the top. Number 30. He comes in in number 30 and lasts about three minutes. So we got Edge and Orton. They're exchanging words before attacking the other men. Crowd chanted, this is awesome. Orton gave McIntyre an RKO. Then Edge followed with a spear. Edge and Orton then gave him a double RKO. So I'm worried about this point, or I'm worried at this point about Drew McIntyre. I'm like, "Uh uh-oh. They're targeting him, and McIntyre's not going to last. He might get eliminated here. So, after the double RKO, Orton set up for an RKO on Edge, but Edge caught him. He's like, "Uh uh-uh, I know you, motherfucker. Orton tried to play this off like it was no big deal, which everybody thought was funny. The Viper, you know, he's willing to strike at any given moment. He'll stab you in the back without uh, any questions asked. So, Edge knew what he was getting into here. So, Randy Orton tried to get one up on Edge. Edge said, you ain't getting one over on me. Edge... The fucking slick bastard that he is eliminated Orton after a friendly back and forth. So he eliminated Orton. This was great. Crowd chanted, you still got it. Orton was obviously yelling at Edge. We could be looking at one of two scenarios. Edge, Orton, and a mystery partner against the OC, which I do think is going to be the case. I do think we're going to see Rated RKO joined together for WrestleMania. Or it could be Edge versus Orton at WrestleMania. But then that where does that leave the OC? So all of my ideas and my fantasy booking, I said this on the podcast two weeks ago. Looks like we could be headed towards that and it could become a reality. And I think that's great. I think that's awesome. It tells a great story and the history is there between Orton and Edge. So Edge and Reigns brawled. It's down to Edge, Reigns, and McIntyre. Reigns went for a spear. Edge dodged a spear of his own and he leaped over Roman Reigns, got a big pop. Edge and Reigns traded blows on the apron until Reigns kicked Edge's hand off the rope and he could not balance any longer. And Reigns eliminated Edge to booze. Now, Roman Reigns winning this thing is on everybody's mind. And it was not going to go over well. If he won the Rumble, it was not going to go over well, being that he eliminated Edge and everybody wanted Edge to win this thing. Everybody. So now we're down to Reigns and Drew McIntyre. Reigns gave McIntyre a Superman punch. McIntyre followed with a fucking absolutely brutal Claymore kick. And he dumped Roman over the top rope. And McIntyre wins the 2020 Men's Royal Rumble. McIntyre versus Lesnar is set for WrestleMania. On one hand, I want to be happy. Anybody but Reigns, right? Anybody but Roman Reigns. But man... It is difficult to get excited about this. It really is. First of all, I'm so fucking happy to see Drew McIntyre finally get what he deserves. This guy should have been a world champion fucking a year ago. This guy should have been world champion already multiple times over on the main roster. They fucking floundered with this guy and stalled with this guy and kept this guy in mid-card purgatory for so long. It's finally great to see him break out, you know? 
it's tough to get excited about this because we as fans are fickle. And I know we're fickle. I'm fickle. You guys are fickle. It is so great to see McIntyre get over as a baby face. This bizarre transformation from, you know, Scottish psychopath to him doing the countdown and getting over as a baby face and everybody just kind of gravitating towards his, his charisma and his personality now all of a sudden. It's a great thing to see. This is the natural progression that I love to see as a fan of a pro wrestler. This is great. But like I said, we as fans, fans are fickle. What if Drew McIntyre takes down Brock Lesnar? Are we still going to be there for Drew McIntyre after all of this comes to a conclusion? When he beats Brock Lesnar, when he takes the world title, and he shows up on Monday Night Raw as the new world champion, are we still going to be in favor of Drew McIntyre? Or is this going to go in the way that it went with Seth Rollins? Are we going to turn our back on Drew McIntyre? I don't think we will turn our back on Drew McIntyre. But the thing is, in this scenario, it is difficult to watch this and get excited about it. You want to be excited about it. I know you want to be excited. I want to be excited about it. But knowing WWE's track record of following up, it might be a great build. It might be a great story. But when Drew McIntyre finally does it, What's going to come in the build after he wins the world championship? What's the follow-up going to be? Has WWE given you a good follow-up with anybody that's become world champion? More times than not, when someone like this becomes a world champion, WWE tends to drop the ball, and then we want to see that champion, that guy that we so desperately wanted to see, we turn our backs on him. WWE has a terrible track record of things like this. And I hope it's not the same case with Drew McIntyre. This was great. After Brock Lesnar was eliminated in this Royal Rumble, I thought this Royal Rumble was excellent. I thought it was great. They scared the shit out of me with Roman Reigns again in there as the final guy. But they did the right thing and they finally put someone over. McIntyre has had the best night out of everybody on that roster. The elimination to Brock Lesnar and him winning the Royal Rumble. Fucking fantastic. Now... The Lesnar thing and him eliminating everybody that he did in the first half of this match, looking back at it, it looks like he buried half the fucking roster. But looking at who was eliminated, most of them were fucking bulletproof. Guys like Morrison buried. Guys like Eric Rowan, we don't give a shit about. Guys like Elias, we don't give a shit. These guys were losers going into the Royal Rumble. I'm trying to convince myself of that. They were losers going in to the Royal Rumble. So how much of a burial was it really when he buried guys who were, who were already buried at that point. I'm trying to look at it somewhat positively. But after Lesnar got eliminated, this Royal Rumble was very enjoyable. And at the end, I'm very pleased with the outcome. We got Drew McIntyre, and I'm very much looking forward to the build, especially after the stare down, especially after Heyman's shocked reaction when Lesnar got eliminated. It's going to be a very interesting Monday Night Raw tomorrow. And for the first time in a very long time, I can honestly say... I'm very much looking forward to Monday Night Raw to see what happens here. Even with the Charlotte thing and the possible inclusion of Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey, I'm I'm interested to see where they go. That was the worst part of the evening. Charlotte winning the Royal Rumble. Terrible creative decision. But Lesnar, McIntyre, I'm excited. And so should you guys. WWE, they got one wrong and they got one completely right. Got to build up new superstars. This is McIntyre's time. They cannot afford to drop the ball. It's all in the aftermath. I just don't trust this company to do right. Guys, I'm getting out of here. If you enjoyed the review, please hit that thumbs up. If you enjoyed, hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that bell for all notifications. I will be back for more content right here on the channel with your Monday Night Raw review tomorrow night. Thank you so much for joining me in here two hours for this Royal Rumble review and I will see you guys right back here with more content on the channel on Monday for Raw. Follow me on social media at JD from NY206. That's on Twitter and Instagram. Hit that subscribe button like I said down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. Make sure you guys check out my sponsor for tonight's show, Audible. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. And if you guys want want more content from me, you guys can check out the description down below and check out all the videos that you might have missed this week. Guys, I'm getting out of here, and I'll see you right back here for Monday Night Raw. This has been 
JD, for your official Royal Rumble 2020 review right here on Off The Script. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night for Raw. See you then.